Ladies, gentlemen, welcome on back. That's right. Today, we're going to be diving on into another tier list. We do tier lists every single week. I'm excited about this tier list. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is a world that people have extremely strong feelings about. We're going to be going over the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All 23 films, we're going to be ranking them. We're going to be ranking them from the very tippity top of where it is. Cinematic Masterpiece all the way down to the bottom. Leave it in the dumpster. Five total categories, 23 movies only one can be on top it goes down right now so anyways ladies and gentlemen this is the tier list right here anyways we've got them all the way listed from cinematic masterpiece to a tier to b tier to c tier and then leave it in the dumpster so let's start off with iron man the very first marvel movie the one that started the marvel cinematic universe it had some really good cgi in it i thought the suit design was cool the starting story around how you know tony got his powers he doesn't actually have powers how he got his suit i should say how he developed it it's really really good it was a good baseline for a story but i have to say as a movie in and of itself it's beats here it's an average movie iron man 2 the second one was pretty good it had a lot more about about Tony starting to really dive into this realm of, hey, I'm kind of a superhero. I saved the world from terrorists. In the span of 10 years, how Marvel transcended from just the very earthly, real world things to very sci-fi stuff, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I thought Iron Man 2 was like a, a, a decent movie. I'm gonna put it in B tier. The Incredible Hulk, granted, had a different Hulk. It had a different Hulk act. I'll be honest, it really did. The Incredible Hulk had a uh, Edward Norton as the Hulk. He was then replaced by Mark Ruffalo. It kind of fleshed out a little bit of what, you know, the Hulk had to offer. It was a decent superhero movie. I'd say it's C tier. It wasn't that great. And finally, rounding out Iron Man. Now hear me out. Iron Man 3, I actually think was the best Iron Man movie. First of all, Pepper Potts starts to become a uh, a, a bigger factor in, in Tony's life. Obviously, Pepper Potts starts to fall off as more superheroes come in in the future Avengers movies. That's totally understandable. But I think the story of Iron Man and Tony Stark is incomplete without Pepper. And so I think that Pepper's larger role in this film gave it a little bit better story progression and, and a little bit better character progression, honestly. But I am going to give it beats here. I think it's better than the original Iron Man, and I think it's better than Iron Man 2. I loved his little PTSD thing that he was having from the Avengers movies. Now we get to the Avengers. Now, the Avengers was obviously the movie that just kind of took off Marvel, right? I mean, the Avengers just completely made Marvel what it is today. Without, without the Avengers, Marvel obviously would never be as good as it is today. The ability for the the directors to bring all of these people together into one movie and to not make it seem like it's only about one person was so good i have to get through one more first we gotta get through thor thor happened before the avengers so we gotta get to thor first uh, I think that the idea behind Thor was really good, right? You had the uh, Thor who was stripped of his powers, sent to Earth, and had to prove himself and redeem himself. It's decent. I would say it's probably under the original Iron Man, but better than Iron Man 2. Like, Avengers is definitely A tier. I don't think I really have to argue that too much, right? Thor the Dark World. It was all right. I'm not going to leave it in the dumpster. I don't think it deserves to be left in the dumpster. I think it was better than The Incredible Hulk, to be 100% honest with you. Captain America The First Adventure introduced us to Steve Rogers. And honestly, I think it had some of the greatest world building. It was a prequel to everything else, right? It took what was good about uh, Iron Man and expanded upon it. But again, I think the villain was a little weak. However, I will say the fact that Red Skull comes back later on in these movies does redeem him a little bit. I think I think Hydra, if Hydra had been the only villain and they were the ones experimenting on this, it would have been a stronger, more compelling villain than a super-powered alien Hydra in World War I. I think it was a great movie. I think it's definitely the top of B tier. Better than all the Iron Man movies, but I do not believe it is in A tier. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Now, this was a really good movie. It introduced The Winter Soldier, which was a phenomenal addition. Uh, Captain America, The Winter Soldier was a, a fantastic movie. I think that it had one of the more compelling villains. I loved how we didn't understand what was going on until a lot later on in the movie. Had some incredible fight scenes. This scene right here, bro, on another level. The cinematography here was so good. Also, ScarJo is in it, so I mean. Fire? Fire? My man's got the shield. That's the first time you ever see anyone else hold the shield or throw it. Pulls out the knife. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
Yes, look at that flip. Bro, some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this was phenomenal. I think it was really good. I think it was above a, uh, B tier. I think it is A tier. Now, I don't have too much to say about Avengers Age of Ultron. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I think Avengers Age of Ultron was pretty weak. I think it was better than the Iron Man movies. I think it was probably better than Iron Man 3. You could skip it. I think it has a lot of character building for future films. So you couldn't skip it like you can skip The Incredible Hulk and you can skip Thor Dark World. Right, let's get Ant-Man out of the way. Paul Rudd, hilarious. Uh, his sidekick characters, I forget their names, hilarious. Doesn't matter. You don't need to know their names. They're just funny. I think Ant-Man is definitely one of the better superhero movies. I think it's better than Captain America, the original. I think it's better than all the Iron Mans, better than the original Thor. Ant-Man is a phenomenal movie. Captain America Civil War, also A tier. I felt like Captain America Civil War was honestly an Avengers movie without Thor. And I think it was better than Ant-Man. When you have that airport fight scene and you finally saw Spider-Man for the first time, masterpiece. All right, then we got Doctor Strange. Now, Doctor Strange is a wild card. I do think that Mads Mikkelsen was a phenomenal and I mean phenomenal. Uh, I think Doctor Strange is A tier. And I think it's above Ant-Man as well. I think it is below Captain America Winter Soldier, but I think it's above Ant-Man. Black Panther. Now, Black Panther's A tier, absolutely. But I don't think it's as high as a lot of people think. Black Panther is kind of uh, overrated in a lot of ways and yet underrated in others. Black Panther is overrated in its story. It's a little too straight and arrow. Up to this point, we've seen the straight and arrow hero story. We've seen Iron Man. We've seen Thor. And now, while I think Black Panther is better than those movies, I don't believe it did anything wild with its story. I think it really could have dove in a bit more. It's really just about, hey, I'm the king and I'm claiming that, and someone else coming in and claiming that they have the rightful heir to the throne. It's decent. I think the first Guardians of the Galaxy deserves to be in the cinematic masterpiece tier. Now hear me out, hear me out. The very first Guardians of the Galaxy your beauty is incomparable with the follow. I think it did such a good job with balancing humor and action. It, it did the best job by far. The Guardians of the Galaxy introduced Rocket, probably my favorite character in the entire cinematic universe. It introduced Gamora, an incredible character. Star-Lord, who, uh, you know, granted what we may or may not feel about him later on in the series, Star-Lord was a great character in the first movie. Rax has some of the best comedic timing in the entire series. And Groot, who's just there to be the Groot, you know. I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's like B at best. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 had so much potential with Nebula. Oh, they built into Nebula more. Oh, Nebula is such a good character. And yet they threw it out the door and just had it be a superhero fist fight at the end where it's literally Pac-Man fighting against uh, his dad. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, while it had incredible potential, I think Rocket was done really well again. I think Star-Lord in this one started to fall off. I don't think they nailed Star-Lord as well. I think Gamora started to shine. Mantis really shined in this movie with Drax. The Mantis-Drax combination from this movie onwards is, is top-tier comedy. Eh, I'll put it top of B tier. I'll put it top of B tier. I think it's the top of B tier. Spider-Man Far From Home. That was the next movie. I think that Spider-Man has some of the best line delivery. You tell me Tobey Maguire is better than Tom Holland? I'm calling you crazy. Tom Holland is such a better Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. I think Tobey Maguire is overrated 100%. While I think the movies were pretty good, first of all, I think that he was way too mature for the part of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Spider-Man Far From Home was amazing. It's top of A tier. It's better than the Avengers. Thor... Ragnarok, I think, was even better than Guardians of the Galaxy. Thor Ragnarok was everything that we wanted from Thor. Just done to perfection. Thor losing his hammer, understanding that he is where the power comes from and not the hammer. Loki being a protagonist for the first time and the vibes that Loki and Thor had together was so good. Uh, it introduced Valkyrie, while not the most interesting character in terms of personality, had a great backstory. Hela came out of nowhere, and then they had Fenrir with that epic send-off? <laughs> Bro, in the theater, I lost my shit here. I lost my shit on that. Bro, that was like, that was such a good scene. And then my man just hulks it up. Avengers Infinity War. I will say, though, when you're sitting in the theater, and it starts off right where Thor Ragnarok left off, and then Thanos bodies the Hulk and then kills Loki right off rip. That was phenomenal. The Thor conclusion of his arc came to came to its head. A man literally sat in front of a star taking it in order to make a weapon that he could go kill Thanos with. And then he came in with the greatest cinematic entrance of all time into Wakanda. Bro, my man got the juice. I think that Vision was a little bit overpowered in the prior movies. And the fact that they made him weak the entire time. 
really well done. Scarlet Witch comes out and becomes a badass. I'm here for Scarlet Witch. Here's my thing about Infinity War. I think they had a better women empowerment moment than Endgame. You know, in Endgame, they kind of had that forced where all the girls got together and then they rushed Thanos. I thought it was really good. But I think Infinity War had a better one. It wasn't a forced moment, but it was when they all had to fight that one alien girl in the trenches. And then Scarlet Witch finally threw her up and she got shredded. I thought that was really well done. Uh, Black Panther comes out. Bucky comes back. Yo, Bucky and Rocket meet for the first time. My man Rocket's trying to get that arm. Oh, and the intro. The intro when they first land on Earth. The, the squabble back and forth between Iron Man, Doctor Strange, uh, the Hulk. Wong, Wong. The four of them when they're on Earth talking to the aliens oh it was so good at this point with only these movies out in marvel i think the loki send-off was bad uh and the wasp was really good i think the wasp was a bit weaker of a character i think they could have fleshed her out a bit more and i think the villain was absolutely terrible but it was a decent movie captain marvel now the only reason captain marvel is even here is to allow her to come in for endgame captain marvel is actually a decent movie i think Samuel Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn were the true carries of that movie. But I think that if it was just Nick Fury and, and, and Talos, it'd be A tier. If it was just Brie Larson and Jude Law, I'd be leaving it in the dumpster. And so because of that, I'm going to throw it into bottom B bracket. And here's why. You can't skip it. You need to know about Captain Marvel. Avengers Endgame, the culmination of every single thing that Marvel has put out. The masterpiece that came together and solved the issue that Infinity War left. Endgame was the best MCU movie. It's better than Infinity War. Avengers Endgame, here we go. So it starts off, obviously, Tony and Nebula are just wilding out there. Then they go to save the day. They find Thanos. They saw him use the stones. He's destroyed. Thanos has nothing left. His arm is toast. As soon as they come in, the gauntlet or chops off the gauntlet. When I saw that in the theater, I remember going, oh my god, what the fuck is happening? And then boom, they chop off Thanos' head. Bro, I remember the theater was just dead quiet. I remember everyone was yelling like, woo, when, when Thor came in and chopped off the arm. When the head came off, everyone just went silent. Everyone was like, what? And then the screen goes black. And it says five years later. And you're just like, what the fuck? Here's my issue with Endgame. And you can't, every single time I watch that intro, I get chills. They come through. Bro. Bro. The music. Uh, who would have thought that the greatest piece of cinematic just experience we would ever experience in our lives would come in 2019? And he's got the hammer. Honestly, I have to say, if you're not into Marvel movies and you're not into superhero movies, I can understand why that might not be impactful. But if you were invested in the series, you, you appreciate superhero movies, you find them to be extremely entertaining, you get invested in the storylines, you maybe... You don't even need to read the comics, but you just you just experience them as an entirety. I see all 23 of these movies as one movie. It's one movie or one TV series split up into 23 parts. Spider-Man Far From Home, I also think was a phenomenal movie. I actually think it's better than the original Avengers. I think Spider-Man Far From Home did a great job of setting up phase four. I thought the I thought Jake Gyllenhaal and Hero was fantastic. I love Nick Fury in it. I love the reveal that Talos was actually Nick Fury, which makes sense because there's a lot of things that, ha that Nick Fury does in this movie that you're like, Nick Fury wouldn't have fallen for that. Nick Fury would have known that. He's always on top of it. Makes sense, because Talos was Nick Fury the whole time. I thought Zendaya was fantastic in this movie. Zendaya was phenomenal. She absolutely killed it. They finally get together. Peter's struggling with the loss of Tony. The world's struggling with the loss of Tony. The world's trying to recover after the events of Avengers Endgame. Aunt May? Bro, like, this movie's fantastic. But for a movie franchise, only two C-tier movies out of all of those, that's a high-quality franchise. And that's what I'm saying. There's none of them that I would leave in the dumpster. Maybe The Incredible Hulk, because it's a totally different character. If I, I if I had to throw one more movie into C-tier, I'd probably throw Iron Man 2 into C-tier. But I don't really want to. I think it deserves B-tier. Could I take Thanos in a fist fight? I mean, I'm not saying I could, but all I'm saying is Thanos isn't around anymore. That's all I'm saying. And her like her, her whole the, the whole shock trooper arc could have been could have been explored a little bit more. Episode one: Star Wars: The Phantom Menace.